Zielinski. Um, she's an artist in Brooklyn, and her work blurs the lines between art and technology, and it spans a wide variety of media, from sculpture to computer programs. And her talk today is titled Reverse Abstraction. So welcome, Ashley. Hi. Oh, it's on. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ashley Zielinski. I am an artist. I work in Brooklyn. Um, and I'm going to talk today about my project, Reverse Abstraction. Um, so reverse abstraction, I'm going to start with the basics. Uh, how a computer works is a series of ones and zeros on and off, which is a processor's language. This is called binary code. Um, so binary code is not ab abstract to a computer. To a computer, this is how its brain works. This is how it sees the world, kind of like this. This is like really matrixy, so excuse that. But this is how a computer would see the world if it was visually represented. Um, so my project, Reverse Abstraction, uses the term abstraction, which is used in computer science, and the term abstraction, which is used in art. Um, so in art, in art history, abstraction means the further away you get from a realistic representation, so figurative landscapes, um, the more abstract it becomes in art. That term is abstraction. And to a computer, the closer you get to a user interface or something that would be recognizable to a human, the further away you get from, that's abstraction for a computer. So it's further away from what it can understand. So my project, Reverse Abstraction, uses um, computer language uh, in an abstract way, but also tries to sync it into what a human can understand. So it's art that both a human and a computer can appreciate. And that's kind of what my art is about. It's about blurring the lines between how um, computers interpret art and kind of teaching art to computers and machines. So this piece is Joseph Kasuth's one and three chair piece. Um, and Joseph Kasuth was a conceptual artist. Um, and I'm, I have background in art. I went to RISD. So I'm an artist. So all my tech stuff, I've taught myself after um, college. So this is Joseph Kasuth's one and three chair piece. And in his piece, he's questioning reality. What is the real chair? So he has a picture of a chair, a chair, and a definition of a chair. And which is the real chair was his question. Um, so I started this project reverse abstraction thinking about what is reality in art and what is reality to a computer. So this is Joseph Kasuth's chair still questioning what is the real reality, but questioning it for the 21st century. So this chair is made up of hexadecimal code, which is binary code, but shortened. Um, because binary code would be far too large, it would have way too many numbers, to fit onto an actual chair. Um, so this chair questions the reality of what is the real chair. Is the real chair the code, the code that the computer can understand, or is the real chair the chair that the human can understand? So if a computer was to read the code on the chair, it would see the object, the chair. Um, so after I came up with this concept, this was the first sculpture that I um, envisioned for this series. Um, I had to figure out what, what is the best material to create the chair in. So that's when I got my first MakerBot. <laughs> so I'll show you. This is my MakerBot's first steps. So um, once I decided that I was going to have to learn how to 3D print and build a 3D printer, because at the time they didn't come pre-assembled, um, you had to get a kit from MakerBot and put it together. Um, so basically in a week, I had to like crash course and teach myself how to make a 3D printer. And I did a Kickstarter to raise the money to get them, because they were this one is the Thingomatic, which was $2,000 at the time, the same price as the brand new replicator. But assembly required. Um, these were my first reverse abstraction pieces. These are um, tilted cubes. So um, the code, if the computer was to read it again, would, they would see a black cube and a white cube. Um, so these. These were my first um, sculptures printed on the MakerBot. So um, I'm going to skip ahead to what I'm doing now. 
I'm doing a series of platonic solids. There are five platonic solids, and I'm trying to put them in all different places all over the world. This one is the hexahedron, and it's being laser cut um, in aluminum to go into the Saudi Arabian embassy, or the US embassy in Saudi Arabia, and that's supposed to happen in 2014. So I've come a long way from printing them tiny on a MakerBot, to now this one's going to be four feet tall. Um, and this is the tetrahedron. It's in a file version right now, ready to be laser cut at 10 feet tall. And this is the hexahedron being laser cut at a fabrication studio in Brooklyn. So I also had to decide um, when making sculpture, I wanted to try to move into two-dimensional forms. Um, so like how to create a painting for a robot, how to create a painting for a machine. So this was my first attempt at making a painting for a machine. This is the Mona Lisa in hexadecimal code. And it's laser cut on the same size canvas as the actual Mona Lisa. So that nice creamy color comes from, it actually, it's the canvas that's being burned and laser cut. Um, and I'm showing these in Art Basel Miami this year in December. And I think I'm doing, I'm doing a Starry Night version for that show. So this is a close-up. And you can really see the canvas. Um, but the code is very, very small. So when you look at it from far away, it just kind of seems like this blur. So I have them set up off the wall a few inches so it creates a nice shadow behind it. Otherwise, you would just see like this creamy, abstract piece. Um, this was one of my first large-scale sculptures in the reverse abstraction series, and it's the impossible triangle. Um, and it is also, it's laser cut in aluminum, um, hex code. So, but it's an optical illusion. So I'm going to play a video. Oop. So you can get the illusion. Yes. So as you walk around the piece, it's three pieces welded together. But if you stand in front of it at the right angle, the two points meet up, and it becomes an impossible triangle. Um, how I came up with this piece was I was asked to do a piece for Bushwick Open Studios this summer. And I had a very limited artist budget, and laser cutting costs a lot of money. So I call this piece the financial equation because it was my um, equation to solve how I was going to get a three-dimensional piece set up for the show, only having enough money to, you, to laser cut three small parts. So I had to use an optical illusion. <laughs> um, OK, so a uh, diversion from the reverse abstraction series is um, I'm trying to teach math to computers and like visual to computers, um, visual representations of art to computers. So I'm also trying to teach humans a little bit about how computers think, too. So this one is pi. And it, instead of having the code to represent the object, this actually has pi on it. So you can see it's like 3.14, blah, 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 blah. And it has like the infinite amount of numbers that pi is. Um, and I also did a golden ratio. And this one is 3D printed in gold. Um, and it has the golden ratio on it, the Fibonacci number. Um, and I had, this is a series of two. This is the triangular one. I also have a rectangular one. But this was my first time 3D printing in something that wasn't plastic. Um, so how they do this is this one's printed at Shapeways. So there are two ways that you can 3D print something at home on your um, MakerBot or something like that. Uh, it uses heated extrusion. So you have a roll of plastic, and it lays out the sculpture layer by layer by drawing it kind of like an inkjet printer, but in, a th in three dimensions. And that one, you can only print in plastic, and you have to use all kinds of support material to hold the different pieces up so they don't flop down. But Shapeways offers um, laser 3D printing, which is when you have a big vat of plastic powder, and they shoot lasers into it and draw the whole object, and you can just pull it out in one big piece. So how they do the gold is they laser cut or they shoot lasers in and make it out of wax and then it's sent to a foundry and this is actually cast with steel and then gold plated. 
Um, so this was a whole other project because there's all kinds of restrictions on how tiny all the pieces can be. And my pieces can get pretty tiny. Um, this is also a 3D printed sculpture. It is a Tibetan prayer wheel. But in, um, so in Tibetan Buddhists use prayer wheels and they spin them and it has a mantra on it, a prayer, that they will, as they will like, um, meditate on as they spin it. Um, and instead of putting a mantra or a prayer on my prayer wheel, I used the Dalai Lama's Twitter feed because he tweets every day. Um, but they're all very, they're all very spiritual, uplifting tweets. So they're kind of like mantras, or they are mantras. So this is the Dalai Lama's Twitter feed on a prayer wheel. This is a piece I did for um, a video exhibition at MoMA. Um, so in teaching computers about art, I also am trying to teach myself about how a computer thinks. This is me writing the Wikipedia definition of art in binary code. And I only got through the first paragraph because it, it took a really long time. So an assistant of mine and I spent the entire day and she read out all the ones and zeros as I wrote them down on the chalkboard. And this is a time lapse of something that took like five hours. And it really makes you appreciate how fast a processor works. So that's it, front and back. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to kind of move away from my reverse abstraction series because I'm sure you guys are all wondering what this is on my face. So I'm going to talk to you about that now. Um, so this is a piece done by the artist Sophie Call. And Sophie Call was a uh, French conceptual artist. Um, she, her work was all um, based in playing games. So she would make, um, she would do performance pieces, but she'd set uh, rest like restrictions or rules to a game that she would play with herself. Um, this was her birthday ceremony piece. And she would have a birthday party every year, and she would invite X amount of guests, depending upon how old she was. She had every guest bring one present. Um, there would have to be a new stranger every year. There was just all these restrictions and rules to how her birthday party played out. And then she'd create these um, cabinets that had were basically the uh, residue of the performance piece, which were all her birthday presents. And she'd do a book explaining how the birthday party went. Um, so I'm trying to um, riff off of Sophie Call's piece, and I do a virtual birthday party for myself every year. But not on my birthday. I do it on my Reddit birthday. So uh, your Reddit birthday is the day of the year that you've created your Reddit account, which is a social media news. I'm sure you guys have heard of Reddit. Um, so on my cake day, on my Reddit birthday, I set up a virtual birthday party with a constraints and rules, and I make a game for myself. Um, so this is a sketch of how I envisioned my first Reddit birthday party playing out. Um, this is my invitation. So I set up a table with a bunch of computers, and they all have Skype, and I send out an invitation on Reddit. So I'll post this invitation in different subreddits. And people can Skype in to my birthday party or Google Hangout into my birthday party. Um, and I also do a Reddit meetup so people can come in real life. Um, but most of, my or most of my guests come um, through Skype. And I do a Ustream, so you can watch it on Ustream if you don't want to come virtually or in real life. And I do a SyncTube, which is YouTube videos that are all synced together. So everybody can watch the same video, listen to the same music. Um, and basically, my birthday party every year is trying to use the most available up-to-date technology to create a virtual birthday party. This is my first Reddit birthday. Um, and I had computers, and I had stagehands, which were my friends that came. And they would sign people in and out of the Hangout. And I, also, I did this in a production studio in Midtown. Um, and the whole thing was streamed live. And you could listen to the same music as everybody else. And I gave all of my party guests Reddit Gold, which gives you, um, it's like an added expansion pack for your Reddit account. So I try to give party favors, too. Um, and I also make cake. 
So my first job when I moved to New York, because I had to pay the bills, was I worked at a sculptural bakery. And I made sculpture cakes. So every year on my Reddit birthday, I make a sculpture cake for the people that come in real life, because they end up being my stagehands and have to do a lot of work signing people in and out and um, writing down usernames for Reddit Gold. This is my Ustream for people to watch. So you could just log on. Since there's a limited number of spaces for people that can come in and out, you have to wait in line. For somebody to sign out before you can sign in to the party, you can watch it live on Ustream. So this year, I got my Google Glass. These guys. Um, so I'm working with Google because I'm doing a performance piece this year for the Reddit birthday, and I'm doing an artist point of view. So you'll be able to stream live onto my Google Glass and see what I'm seeing as I'm doing my virtual birthday party. Um, so that's what these are. <laughs> and this is my invitation to my Reddit birthday party this year. So if you guys are interested in coming, um, this year I'm going to give away my promotional code for my plus one to get a Google Glass as well. So that's my party favor this year. And I'm also working with a startup group that does crowdsourced art projects. So they do a virtual canvas and you can all log into the canvas and draw together while listening to the same music. And it's, it's really great because it's actually like how a party plays out where there's different Hangouts, different Google Hangouts on each computer, and you can switch from each Google Hangout and hang out with different people. Also hang out with the people that are in real life at my birthday party. And you can make some art and win some prizes. So I hope you all can make it. Are there any questions? Okay, great, thanks.